Good morning. It's Monday, May 11th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Fellowship of the Singed Eyebrow, and our scripture is Psalm 102, a psalm of a prayer of one overwhelmed with trouble, pouring out problems before the Lord. The psalmist writes this, Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my plea. Don't turn away from me in my time of distress. Bend down to listen and answer me quickly when I call to you. For my days disappear like smoke, and my bones burn like red-hot coals. My heart is sick, withered like grass. I've lost my appetite. Because of my groaning, I'm reduced to skin and bones. I'm like an owl in the desert, a little owl in a far-off wilderness. I lie awake, lonely as a solitary bird on the roof. My enemies taunt me day after day. They mock and curse me. I eat ashes for food. My tears run down into my drink because of your anger and wrath. For you have picked me up and thrown me out. My life passes as swiftly as the evening shadows. I'm withering away like grass. But you, O Lord, will sit on your throne forever. Your fame will endure to every generation. You will arise and have mercy on Jerusalem. Now is the time to pity her. Now is the time you promise to help. For your people love every stone in her walls and cherish even the dust in her streets. Then the nations will tremble before the Lord. The kings of the earth will tremble before his glory. For the Lord will rebuild Jerusalem. He will appear in his glory. He will listen to the prayers of the destitute. He will not reject their pleas. I've had a couple of close encounters with fire, both as a young adult. One of those brushes was lighting a pile of brush, ill-advisedly using gasoline as an accelerant, which it was. I had several weeks of explaining to my friends and family why I had no eyebrows. The second experience was with the ancient 1960s ritual of fondue. For those unacquainted, it's a boiling pot of oil into which you dip cheese on the end of a skewer. The cheese becomes a golden brown mass of delight. McDonald's and Chipotle Mexican Grill would be proud. One evening, we were drawn to the pot. Unfortunately, the pot was placed too close to the kitchen wall and the fire was too high. Not having handled too many fires, my first response to the tiny flare-up was the nearby kitchen sink. Now, if you've ever seen a grease fire, you know pouring a glass of water on a little fire makes it a big fire. I learned that lesson that night. I had already learned what to say to my friends about singed eyebrows. These images of singed eyebrows and the hard lessons they teach came back to me this morning as I was reading the newly published Guidelines for In-Person Worship and Ministry During (laughs) COVID-19. There are 15 pages of guidelines on how to maintain safety against spreading the disease like a grease fire. If you're wondering what fondue and grease fires have to do with COVID-19, and Psalm 102, and uh, the reasonable safety measures, and what they could possibly mean in light of the psalmist's prayer, read it again. His bones were on fire, his heart sickened, withering like grass ready for the match. His appetite was gone, nights were sleepless, lonely, and his enemies mocked his faith in God, taunting him. Still, he prays in faith, believing God would rescue. Fast forward to the day of declining church attendance, cultural acceptance of much of what the church has believed is sin. God mocked in every corner of the earth as a silly crutch held on to people who ought to be locked away for lack of sanity. And now, a government executive order, number 138, stay-at-home order in North Carolina, keeping the church doors closed. Rewind back to the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came down. Peter preached. People believed and the church was born. That was chapter 2 of Acts. The very next instant, Peter heals a paralyzed man at the temple, gets arrested, and the game is on. Persecution begins, and for the last 2,000 years, the church and the world are at odds. Now, 
While the church has always had to deal with obstacles and naysayers, the current conditions seem to be a brewing firestorm not unlike my fondue memory. And like the water in my grease fire experience, the persecution experienced by the church in its beginning was like the water I threw on that boiling oil. It didn't quench anything. Rather, it propelled it to the next level. Believers went everywhere because they couldn't stay in Jerusalem any longer. The gospel was taken away from the grease pit by disciples of the fellowship of singed eyebrows. And so here's the question of the day. What's next? Will the church be going out of business? Will the church, stodgy, trudging like a pile of molasses in January, reeling under the weight of government regulations, cultural apathy, sometimes anger, and infighting of the self-inflicted virus of pandemic proportions, will that church go under? Will her fire fizzle out and be a footnote in history's future? Or will the COVID-19 days be the enemy's final mistake? Will 2020 and its social lockdown be the purveyor of new wine, bursting the old wineskins of worshiping the sanctuary building? Will it be water on the grease fire, this little virus bug that's driven the church and the culture out of its pride and forced us into little electronic fragments of relationship? Will the fellowship of church as it's always been now become the fellowship of the singed eyebrow? Will we have played with fire until it bit us, infected us, changed us, and now challenges us to finally move forward? For you today, the fellowship of the singed eyebrow is not something to be taken lightly, nor is it something to be feared. If we respond boldly, not dumbed down, not faithless and simply dismissing the bug, but boldly looking for what God has for us in this next chapter, we can be like the church of Acts 3. Pushed away from the temple, they went underground to the catacombs, the ancient tombs of the dead. But resurrection was on the way. On the other side of Roman persecution and every other attempt to push God out of the way, the church has one trump card that cannot be pushed aside. Psalm 102. But you, O Lord, will sit on your throne forever. Your fame will endure to every generation. You will arise and have mercy on Jerusalem. And now is the time to pity her. Now is the time you promise to help. For your people love every stone in her walls and cherish even the dust in her streets. Then the nations will tremble before the Lord. The kings of the earth will tremble before his glory. It is time for the now I lay me down to sleep prayers to turn to a realization that we are in spiritual warfare and God's people must trust pray and act like the first century church boldly proclaiming Christ and being the body we need a fellowship of the singed eyebrows you chew on that as you hit the rocky road have a blessed day